Good afternoon. Oh, oh, I miss. Hello. I didn't know I had the camera on. You know, it's okay. Okay, so how was this long vacation? It was good. <laughs> Great. Okay, let me start uh, sharing my screen first and uh, wait a little for the others to join. So are you excited about going back to uh, school? Yes, but not five days a week. It's too much, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All the schools are going three days. Oh, uh, even the, the upper uh, grades. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we will be uh, there until 12 uh, noon, not more than that. Yes, but we have uh, online videos to do at home. Yes, a lot of that, uh, yeah. So how did you find the video, Muhammad? Everything okay? Yes, yes, I already know them. Okay, great, great. The worksheet, you did a perfect job on that. Yes. Okay, let me tell them that I'm live now. Hi, Samar. Hi, Selena. Okay, I'm starting in a minute. Let's see who joins. Hassan, hello. How are you? Good to see you, Hassan. Okay, uh, so let's begin. Uh, you probably saw this in the video. It's an overview of yeah. the curriculum. Okay, uh, welcome back everybody, first of all. Uh, hoping to meet you very soon at school where things will be uh, hopefully so much uh, easier for all of us. Uh, but the good thing is that, as you notice, the curriculum of grade 12 is very similar to that of grade Did you notice that? Did you take a look at the overview of the curriculum? Yes, yes. Great. Hi, everyone. Dana, Dima, Hadil. Those of you who joined now. Okay, so the curriculum is basically the same, but what we're going to do this year is a lot more practice. Um, you know, the title, the thesis statement, types of introduction, etc. all of them. Do you see anything new on this list? Is there anything that we didn't take last year? No, no. We, we took everything, everything. This is concerning the reading strategies, which are, by the way, I included all of them in your ebook, and I will send you the ebook today to the group, right now after I finish, okay? Um, it is free of charge. I'm going to send it. Um, concerning the writing, Okay, we're going to take uh, the different types of expository essays. We're going to take the case study essay, argumentative writing, and uh, the, the only addition will be persuasive writing. Uh, can anyone tell me what is the difference between argumentative writing and persuasive writing? Does anyone know the little difference between them? Yes, me. Yes? Uh, persuasive, you persuade someone with one point, 
Mm -hmm. And get it's about it. Mm -hmm. While argumentative, you talk about two points and the difference between them and the cons and pros. Yes. In the persuasive essay, you are convincing, you, you have like three points. You're convincing a person, for example, to refute it with a more powerful claim of your own. So only persuasive writing will be added. And it's even, uh, in my opinion, uh, it is even much easier than argumentative writing because you don't have to put a refutation. Now, our theme, as you all saw probably in the video, is environmental issues, something you've taken uh, time and time again, but uh, the articles are, I included in my book are very recent. A lot of them have to do with uh, Lebanon. Uh, I just put the, the several uh, issues related to the environment that we're dealing with. Lebanon, unfortunately, has a share of all those issues. Uh, has, can you tell me two major issues that Lebanon is facing environmentally? These days. What issue are we afraid now in Lebanon environmentally, specifically in September, August, September? Miss, there is a problem in your voice. Oh, you can't hear me well? It's glitching sometimes. Okay. Um, so who can hear? If you can hear me, I will repeat it. Uh, what environmental issue could Lebanon be facing in, uh, in this time of the year? September, September, October, every year. And it's increasing year after year. Environmental issue? Yeah, which environmental issue is very Pollution. profound? Uh, yes, which which type? No, not it's not really about pollution. Remember August, uh, September, water, what kind of water, water shortage. Okay, but what disaster could happen? Let me re, re reword what I'm saying. What disaster might happen August, September, every year in Lebanon, and it's on the increase. Uh, it is due to the lack of storage capacity. Okay, but uh, other than water, we are facing a lot of wildfires in Lebanon. Remember last year, like this time, what happened oh, yes. in the country? Due to I, climate changes. Yes, exactly. So many wildfires erupted. And with this weather, I, I'm not very optimistic, you know, with all this uh, dry grass and with, uh, with all this heat, we're afraid of uh, sudden wildfires. Okay, um, our first lesson uh, will be about uh, sea pollution in Lebanon. Okay, and uh, how unsafe the waters in Lebanon are really. Now, uh, I would like to quickly take a look with you at the different uh, reading skills that we're going to take this chapter, only this chapter. Title, thesis, is it implicit or explicit? Um, who can tell me what the difference is between implicit and explicit thesis statement? What's the difference if the thesis is implicit or explicit? Uh, okay. Which one of them is when it's implicit. negative? Yeah. Implicit is directly expressed or written. Yes. Directly stated. And explicit, yes. Explicit is the opposite. Okay. Uh, explicit is directly stated. Implicit is when the author implies the thesis, but he or she doesn't state it. You have to provide the thesis. Okay. Um, several of the questions I might ask you would be like, uh, this article does not have a thesis statement. Provide your own. What do you do when you have to provide your thesis statement? What should you do first? before giving a thesis statement. Like what? Uh, if, for example, I, I give you an article on a quiz and I didn't write a, a direct thesis statement, I ask you to write a thesis statement of this article, what do you have to do first? You should read the body paragraphs. Yes, you have to read the whole, the whole essay or else uh, uh, you cannot figure out what the main idea is. And then in one sentence, tell me what the main idea is. Now, types of introduction, of course, uh, I will go through them quickly with you. Patterns of organization, chart analysis, author's credibility, and types of audience. Let me go uh, through them quickly. They are, on, uh, they are in your uh, ebook, of course, pages 6 to 17. When I send it today, you can take a look at them. Now, 
First of all, title and uh, titles and subtitles. Why are, are titles important? Samar, why should we write titles? To grab the reader's attention. Of course. Uh, what is a title by definition? It is a condensed summary of the main idea of the body paragraph. Yes, it's a condensed summary of the main idea of the body paragraphs. And how about the subtitle? Why does the, the author resort to writing subtitles sometimes? Samara, you have to give us background information about the body paragraph. Okay. Uh, for example, let's say we're talking about the symptoms of coronavirus. The, the, the title would be symptoms of coronavirus. What could one of the subtitles be? Uh, no symptoms. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the subtitles will be high fever and then the author would describe this coughing or shortness of breath, and the author would describe it. They are titles within the titles. The purpose is to organize and categorize the author's information so that uh, the, the reader's work is facilitated. Okay, the thesis statement, we talked about that. Um, now the types of introduction. You still remember them? There are five major Types, rarely do we ever get the anecdote. Okay, anecdote, what's an anecdote? Sometimes the author starts with an anecdote. What's that? Short, short story. Yes, a short, interesting story. Sometimes the author would start with historical introduction, a general to specific introduction. For example, if I'm talking about wildfires, I would start with, with major, all kinds of pollution, and then you uh, narrow it down until you reach wildfires. Then interesting facts or statistics. This is a very common type of introduction, as you notice. You start with a shocking or interesting fact, and then series of questions where the author provides several questions in the introduction, hoping to what? Why does the author give several questions in the introduction? Okay, the, the purpose of questions is to make the reader more curious to find curious. the answers. Yes, to find the answers within the text. And this is in, in the booklet also when I send it to you. You will uh, see what, how I will ask you the questions. We did that last year, but this year I made it more uh, clear and more organized. Okay. Um, what purpose is it? Uh, please make sure you go through those. Remember, whenever I ask you about the type of introduction, you need to state the type, the clue that led you to the type of introduction, and you need to give me three purposes for that introduction. Let's say the author starts with a shocking fact or, fact or statistic. Why does the author do that? For three reasons. What, what could that be? Here they yes, are. We can't hear you, Ad. Uh, you can't hear me? You still can't hear me now? Now we can, but we okay. couldn't. Okay. Why would the author start with a shocking fact or statistic? You need to give me three, three reasons why he used this method. Three purposes, which are listed here in the screen in front of you. In brief, by using the above mentioned methods, the introductory paragraph does all of those. It arouses the reader's attention, uh, reader's interest grabs their attention, introduces the thesis, prepares readers for a thorough discussion of the ideas in the thesis, introduces the topic and the background. So you have to at least put three of those four points here in every question related to introduction. Now, if I ask you, how is the concluding paragraph related to the introductory paragraph? How would you answer? Where are the rest, by the way? None of them is participating. Rama. How are you? How are the concluding paragraphs and the introductory paragraph uh, uh, related? How would you say they are related? Okay, let's see. All of you have yourself. Hi. How are the introduction and conclusion related? Okay, in the introduction, the author obviously presents the main idea of the text. And in the conclusion, as you see here in front of you, okay, the, the conclusion restates restates the main idea and the introduction in different ways. Okay? Can you hear me? Okay. Patterns of organization. 
also you can go through them um, in, in your own time. Remember that the author organizes his or her ideas in a certain pattern in the paragraphs. He might choose exemplification where he presents an idea and gives examples about it, just like the ones written here. And your clue words will, will be, for example, for instance, such as the case of, etc. Definition where the author would give uh, a term or a concept like adolescence, and then in the paragraph, you will give a definition of the term adolescence using uh, words like defined, means, refers to. Comparison, obviously, the author is uh, comparing two different ideas in the same paragraph. Contrast, he is uh, contrasting or showing the opposite of two different ideas. Cause effect relationship. Listing or classification, the one I gave you in the worksheet, which uh, all of you who sent me the, the worksheet uh, did a great job on, and uh, I'm really happy about that. Now, moving on, uh, time and chronological order is the last uh, pattern of organization, where the author uh, is listing his ideas in, in the order of time. First, okay, this uh, scientist, first he made sure that all his gear was present, then he made a courageous leap. After that, he tried to pace himself. Three hours later, you, you notice that all the words in red are related to time, so obviously, the pattern of organization in this area is one of time order or chronological order. And this is how I ask you the question, what pattern of organization does the writer use in the above paragraph explain? Okay. In the above paragraph, the author uses time order as a pattern of organization. He uses words such as first, then, later that day, and the day after in order to talk about what the scientists did during that time. So you need to tell me the clue and you need to justify your answer. Is everybody okay till now? Anybody have a question now? Credibility and objectivity, both of those terms mean the same. You can say credibility, objectivity, authenticity, all of that mean the same. What is credibility? From last year, we know that credibility is defined as the quality of being trusted and believed. When I write an article, I want people to believe me. I want to be credible. How can I be credible when I write an article? In order to achieve credibility, I need to use three major means of support. Facts and statistics, real life examples, expert opinion, witness testimony, and statements of authority. Okay, and here I gave you sample the questions that I uh, that I would ask you. All of those ideas are in the video. I'm going through them fast. If you have any questions, please stop me and ask me. To. Any questions so far? Let's see who I have here with me. Everyone is still muted. Badia, how are you? Any questions? Samar? Okay, now, concerning the table, chart table analysis, it could be a pie chart, a bar graph, a table, like the one I gave you in the worksheet, all of them are answered in one way. The answer is written in one single paragraph and is divided into three different parts, okay? First, you have the topic sentence taken directly, just a second, please. The topic sentence taken directly from here. The chart, this is the topic sentence. You take it from here and this is your first part of the answer. The chart depicts research results of the preferred social media platforms among US teens. This is your topic sentence. Now, the next part of your answer will be analysis. You analyze what is written in that chart. You need to give numbers, as I have written here. The most popular social media platform in this study is YouTube, 85%. Notice I put the numbers followed by Instagram, 72%, Snapchat, 69%, Facebook, percentage, Twitter, Tumblr, and Reddit, respectively. The word respectively, of course, you know, from math, means consecutively or in order after each other, okay? Finally, in the conclusion part, you need to write, thus we conclude. This is what the official exam correctors want you to write. Thus we conclude, or therefore we conclude, that social media platforms are immensely popular among teens. They are very popular, which with YouTube at the top and Reddit at the bottom of the list. Look at the answer here. Can you guys uh, see the answer? One paragraph, okay, not three different uh, paragraphs. Three different parts, but all in the same paragraph. Okay, moving on. The audience, types of audience, of course, who is interested in reading this article? Um, uh, as I told you last year, you have to be very specific. If you tell me government, that's not enough. You need to tell me which government. If we're talking about uh, garbage pollution in Lebanon, you need to tell me the government of Lebanon or the uh, municipality authorities in Lebanon. You need to be very specific. Um, general reader is not a type of audience that will not be considered correct on the official exam. Okay, and these are sample questions. You can check them out, of course, later. Um, 
okay, a thematic relationship between two paragraphs. How does the author uh, link two paragraphs? In the first paragraph, he could be presenting one idea, and in the second paragraph, he's comparing it with, with another contrast. In one paragraph, he's presenting the problem, and the, in the other one, he is giving the solution. Addition and reinforcement, etc. A question and answer. In par one paragraph, he asks a question, he poses a question, and in the other paragraph, he provides the answer and cause effect relationship. Where in one paragraph, the author would present the cause, and in the latter paragraph, he would give you the effect. And this is how I would ask you the questions. Okay? Are you guys with me? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So we've come to our last part. Uh, I presented the uh, vocab words uh, for you, the ones for the, the next lesson we will be taking. Did you take a look at them? How did you take a look at the vocab words? Yes. Okay, urban. We took this last year. It's of or relating to a large city. Beirut is an urban area, okay, to large cities. Urbanization is the quality or state of being urbanized. Mediterranean Sea, of course, we know that. Make sure you spell it correctly. Uh, mitigation, making something less harmful or alleviating it. Coastline, of course, it's the beach. Inevitable, what does it mean that if something is inevitable? It means it's bound to happen, you cannot avoid it. Just as global warming has become inevitable because of the rampant pollution that's taking place in the world. Toxin, please stop me if you do not understand a word. Toxin is a poisonous material or a poison. Deteriorating, becoming worse. Crisis is a problem, uh, a difficult situation, a catastrophe. Expatriates are people living outside their native country. For example, we, ha we have a lot of Lebanese expatriates in uh, South America, in Brazil, in, uh, in uh, Argentina, in Africa, in the United States, in Canada. They are Lebanese, but they live abroad. We call them expatriates. Okay, so uh, this is it. This is it. Uh, let's take a quick look at the worksheet. Any issues with the worksheet? Several of you sent me the worksheet. How about the rest of you? Did you answer it? Selena, did you answer the worksheet? Rama? Hadil? Okay. If you haven't answered it yet, please make sure you do so. The quiz, the, the upcoming quiz will include ideas from both the worksheet and the video, okay? Not only the video. The worksheet was about tornadoes. Um, any questions related to the worksheet? We could go through. No. The questions are clear. I put the answers uh, in great detail. This is how I would like you to answer on a test or a quiz. Okay. Um, remember, pronoun reference, I want you to answer in a in a full sentence, like in number four here, the phrase, these are not pronouns, they're phrases. The phrase, these twisters in paragraph three refers to tornadoes, full stop. The phrase, this vast nation in paragraph four refers to United States. The pronoun, it, in paragraph six refers to the structure. Phrase means uh, two or three words that do not form a complete sentence. We call them phrases. The pronoun, these, in paragraph seven refers to mobile homes. What's the significance of the title? Of course, I gave a full answer here. It reflects the main idea of the text, uh, which talks about tornadoes, natural disasters whose causes and effects are still not understood. Those of you who sent me answers, uh, uh, Muhammad, you had a very good answer, uh, Hassan, uh, uh, Samar, okay, you had very good answers. Organizational pattern, etc. Vocab, how did you find the vocab in C? Did anyone have issues with the vocab? No. Mm -hmm. Yes, those who sent me the vocab, but all of them got them correct. Uh, extracts, no issues with the extracts, I hope. Uh, and I told you this clue before that uh, when reading, please put the main idea of each paragraph near it so that you can go back to it when you are solving or answering an extract question. 
and you have to write it this way, extract A completes paragraph five, completes or fits paragraph five, full stop. And the chart, take a look at the way I answered the chart. Somehow you sent me something, you, you already, you also wrote it in three different colors. Um, yes, this is how we answer it, but in a single paragraph. The topic sentence in red, the analysis in uh, marine blue, and the conclusion in green. Okay. Okay, anything else before before we leave? Anything else? Any issues? Those of you who didn't talk, I would have liked to uh, hear your voices. Dima, any issues? Everything okay? Okay. Hamad, do you have a question? No, no, thank you. Okay. Ali, Hassan. No questions? No okay. questions, thank you. Great. Anyway, you can contact me. You can contact me if you have any questions or issues and we will deal with them. Uh, you can also see me in my office hour before the quiz. Please make sure you study the worksheet and the video for the upcoming quiz. Okay? That would be all. See you guys soon. Bye.